A. Action. I'm Marky Costello, and you're watching Talk Show on the Go. I'm Marky Costello, and you're listening to Talk Show on the Go. I'm Marky Costello, you're watching and listening to Talk Show on the Go. And I am here with Eve's drama queen, everybody's drama queen, the queen of hosting. Marky Costello is here. Woo-hoo. Ladies and gentlemen, woo, 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 woo. Marky we have Costello. a huge crowd here at Talk Show on the Go. We have a huge crowd. And I love that you're COVID compliant. I love that everybody in your audience is wearing a mask. Well, they have to. They have to. Yeah, they don't look like this. I know. Like Sometimes, like, we've known each other for how long? Too long. Too long. I know, it's scary. But not long enough. But not we never spent enough time together. No, but how crazy is the world we're living in? Well, we were two of the most obnoxious people we know. We enjoyed each other's company, and now we have to keep our opinions to ourselves. And for people like Marky and Sunda, that's not always Wait, easy. I want to jump in on the opinions to yourself. Yes, we are living in 2020. We've got a pandemic. We have, you know, protests. The world is so imbalanced and lopsided. You know, we're fighting for equal rights for women. We're fighting for equal rights for everybody, you know. The fact that we still have racism in 2020 is really and talking about abortion and talk. I mean, and going back on Roe versus Wade or Roe versus Wade. But mm-hmm. what I really want to say is, I am fascinated with the mind of millennials because no offense to any millennial listening right now, you know, they live on social media, they eat, sleep, and drink it, and you know, all day, every day. But why don't they realize? Why isn't someone teaching them the power in numbers? So. You, you all the big scuff up of how they canceled Stasi Schroeder and you know got her off Vanderpump Rules. The podcast company dropped her. Her book company, everybody, the publishing, everybody just dropped her. They canceled her, and you know, and now no one and her agency UTA fired her. Her publicist fired her. Literally, she was canceled within seventy two hours because of social media. Uh, because of something that happened on Vanderpump Rules that they said was racist, and then actually someone who I've coached, Candace, who's on um, Florida Bama Show on MTV. She broke the story because what happened was there was an African-American girl on season four of Vanderpump Rules, and she didn't sort of pop off like the other some of the other castmates. And Kristen and Stassi were shitty to her. They were. And this was like a couple of years ago. My issue is why didn't Bravo fire them a couple of years ago and not wait for it to get on a podcast somewhat? She revealed it. Oh, and then okay. Bravo fired her, agent fired her, everybody fired her. But my here's my thing, this cancel culture where millennials will cancel you. Why aren't we canceling things like Time Warner Cable or Spectrum Cable? Why aren't we saying, you motherfuckers, it's a monopoly. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's a monopoly, and now they're just dictating the price. And you can't say, fuck you, I'll go somewhere else because no, there's no other place to go. So why aren't we using social media to say, hey, Spectrum, fuck you, lower your prices, or we're going to tell everybody not to pay you for the month of September? Because they need someone like you to tell them, and they need a podcast. And that's why, Marky, I'm telling you, I'm trying to market a whole new show. There is no platform for teens to sit on a podcast and talk for you to say to them, you're cancel culture, cancel spectrum. It's fake news anyway. That's what your kids say all the time. It's I know, news, but fake news. do you really think millennials, uh, you know, teens are going to be riveting? Right. I don't think they're going to be, I think they're going to be like, uh, I think they're too self-absorbed. followers? Yes, canceling? but okay, but here's the thing. That's that whole mindset. Oh, if I have followers, I get, I get rich. Maybe four years ago, five years ago, but everything just... Uh, uh, you know, some, everything that goes up comes down and then it levels out from the housing market to social media. And now literally like what bought, what I could have got from my clients a year two years ago is like a quarter of that today. And because what they're realizing is, you know, hey, this girl has 20 million followers. Let's give her a talk show. So networks gave those people talk shows, which is so unfair. But I know it's unfair, but no one followed them. They liked them on social media, but they weren't willing to follow them. It doesn't them transfer cable. to television. It doesn't transfer. You know because, why? Because they don't have television. No, millennials don't viewers. pay for cable. No, right. That's why they're not going to complain about. Right. It. They pick what they want to watch with who they want to watch it, how they want to watch it, and they pay seven ninety nine a month for that subscription or whatever. And have and, a watch party. And right, and have a watch. Isn't party. that wonderful? Right. Our idea of right. a watch party right. is looking at Rolex. Well, I have everything, and my twenty two year old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our watch party is going through our Rolexes. Uh, but it, it is crazy. Think about it. Like, I want to ask, can I ask you a question? I know it's your show, but I'm your guest. But I'm going to turn the tables on you, motherfucker, and I'm going to start interviewing you. Um, Sunda, as a, as a black woman in entertainment, you know, um, and you your hustle has never 
changed with ignorance. It's just like I did not post on that special Tuesday a black square on my Instagram for you know, Black no. Lives Matter. because I didn't post because I didn't want to be a fucking hypocrite to be like, you know, I we have to educate. You know what I did with my 11-year-old with all the protesting and riots and George Floyd? I sat my kid down because we were all in quarantine and I made him watch things like the movie The Hate You Give. You know what I mean? We watched Mercy. Like, we watched all these amazing films and he literally said to me at the end, he goes, so he's getting arrested because the color of his skin? And I said, yes. yes. Isn't that fucked, Finn? <laughs> and your generation needs to fucking stop it. And that's what's cool about millennials and where they are now. I feel like maybe this young, my, my 22-year-old son's generation will stop this nonsense with racism, sexism. Well, then you everything know. is racist that you say, and you know that. The things I know. You say, forget about it now. Oh, you can't say anything now. We we live, you know, it's like we've never been more connected through Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, blah, 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 our cell phones. But don't say it. But don't say it. You can't say it, right? No, I can think it. You can think I posted the day of the riots. I posted a a picture of this jewelry store that was in flames and people stealing the jewelry. And I wrote, I want, I want, you know, justice for George Floyd. I want to see the protests be peaceful because that's where you have the power but i don't understand the looting and the violence and the vandalism i posted it on instagram everybody had to educate me and they would say every black person that follows me said who cares about a store who cares about it? we have to get our point across who cares we've been suppressed for years but my thing was this i understand that and it's fucked but the minute they started protesting i mean the minute they started vandalizing and, killed and it. The they spirit. killed it the whole spirit went away you, you're taking away and if you want to protest, go to fucking Pacific Palisades where it's all white and entitled motherfuckers. Yes, and entitled. protest there and they'll give you whatever the fuck you want to get you out. Yes. <laughs> so like, me, I feel like I need to be in charge of Black Lives Matter just to say, guys, like, be strategic about it. Because it is, there is so much bullshit and hypocrisy. You should tell her. There she is. Agunda Okaye, right there over your head. That's... So help me God. Agunda. Who is, is she? With Sunday. She's the co-founder. Of did, Black Lives Matter? I did the first Black Lives Matter show. Black Lives Matter show. Right. With Caroline's. And you know what my husband said to me before I went on stage? You know, hon, you better think about this twice. This is going to be a political thing. I said, Mark, it's a wonderful idea. Right. This is great. Right. And it's still great if you're doing it for the right reasons. Right. Now, I had discord in the Persian community because they want to know why my kids, why are they tearing up Gucci? It was like, if they want to bust into Gucci, go bust into your purse, right? Right. Our kids are not going to have right. it like right. that. Right. They right. might have to do something. Right. That's but they're not going to. Right, right. But think about it. They didn't understand, but that's who thought. Well, they didn't even know about George. It was people who didn't right. know. Right. And the stories that you hear are ridiculous. Right. Now, the latest we heard, and since she's the talk show maven, okay, tell me if this is true. Okay. I so, George Floyd did a porn flick with the cop's uh, wife in it. I Listen, I've heard a lot of things Dude, about this George is the Floyd, latest but I didn't one. hear this. This is the latest and uh, there's a definite connection because they work together. But Marky, you know good cops, you know bad cops. This is an evil man who had this. Opinion. Oh, absolutely. Here's my issue. Why are these cops, they, that guy was written up six or seven times. You're written up you're one blue. time, you're fired. Like, you, you don't even, you're done. Cop. You're right, you're a cop. Get the fuck out. Like, and guess what? No pension, no back pay, no nothing. Like, you fucked up like that. Done. Like old school. Where's the accountability? Like, and the, there's, there's rotten cops, you know, absolutely. And, you know, the fact that we're still dealing with these cops. And then what happened to the guy that was waiting in the Wendy's parking lot in Atlanta, Georgia, taking a nap? He was driving from, like, Mississippi to Georgia. I forget the man's name, and I, I feel awful. But he got killed, uh, what, six days after George Floyd? And, you know, and the co- why hadn't we learned from George Floyd? Because we can't learn. They can't, they can't learn. Right. And they're still scared because of color. Now, you know I got busted in the head out there, right? Here? Out here? Punch right in the head. Right from the what kid. happened? Just standing outside, videotaping on my phone. And uh, girl What kind of up. kid? Young, old, white? Like what? 15. 15-year-old black girl. Big one. She smiled at me, came up and punched me in my head. Had two blood clots in my ear. So they're like, are you going to press charges? I'm like, she needs help. Like, think about but it. Why? They're I don't mean, because they're angry. They don't know right, why. Right, right, right. And they can't go out. And they can't go to school where they socialize. Because right. when they're home, their moms and dads are on drugs or they're screwing. Right. Because they're prostitutes. Right. And sometimes the kids have to Yeah, but the pay. busing is bullshit. When are we going to, you know, why do you take these kids that do come from not a great area with parents that are doing what you just said and put them in Beverly Hills? I think that's shitty. Why don't we take their school and their community and fix it up? I do believe a lot of things with 
like defunding a little portion of the police's budget to put domestic violence shelters in communities. Yeah, sure. So because guess what? If your husband's beating on you or your boyfriend and you call 911 because you need help, the cops shouldn't come. It should be someone that is, you know, a master in domestic violence and, and de-escalating a shitty situation and getting that person help or checked into right then. Right. With right. the kids right. before you have another right. situation right. and they come back right. with a gun. Right. And right now there's so much abuse on the rise. And I know this for a fact. You know, I have a background in criminal justice. Right. All my smart friends that are getting that pension. You guys were right. <laughs> I should have stayed working in the prison. They're telling me about the increase of child abuse that's going neglected and the amount of domestic violence that's increased, especially under a wide but in the Asian community, because it's always never reported anyway. It's right. always underreported. Right. All you ever see when something's going on is like black people. That's right. It. Why do you think the Asian community is so unreported? Why? What's your theory on that? That's how they are as a group. Because they just people. don't want the world to see like anything, anything bad. Like, bad. Right, right. They Until, have to be seen right. in the best possible light. I think I think they're just those kinds of people that they just keep to themselves. Well, what breaks my heart is when you talk about the kids. Like, you know, uh, I've been a mom for 22 years. I have two beautiful boys, uh, Lucas and Finn. And, you know, the one thing I know I'm great at is being a mom. Like, I love being a mom. I, I loved birth. I loved everything about it. It's everything. such a, a privilege, you know, to be a mother. And then to see my 22-year-old so successful and smart and self-sufficient. And, right, and responsible. And, and like, respectful. And respectful. Like, I said, hey, let me take out for a hamburger. He's like, no, I had bread for lunch. I wanted to have a salad, a piece of fish, and a glass of wine. I'm like, you're like an 80-year-old man. But I love that. Lucas was even born, you know, two days old. He was like a 12-year-old. Right, exactly. Um, which, you know, look, his father was a comedian. My grandfather was a famous comedian. Luke Costello's grandfather. Yeah, Abbott and Costello. No one listening will know who that is. They're like, who? It's not like, true. I who's on people. first, what's on second, and who's on third? Uh, well, guess what? If it wasn't for Abbott and Costello, there'd be no NBC Universal. There'd be no Universal Studios. They took them out of bankruptcy um, when they signed them. And Abbott and Costello, because Frank and Sam made so much money that they were able to. And they've dedicated a building to them. I have a big key to the city. And if I want to take the kids to the park, I can get free VIP passes. But and my you know, first pictures were taken there. Remember, I you had to send something. You you donated something to the city of Patterson from your. Oh, Patterson program. for Patterson. I'm talking about yeah, at Universal. Yeah. But yes, Patterson. But you have the key to Patterson. I have the key to Patterson. There's a museum in Patterson, New Jersey, Beautiful. and Abbott and Costello yeah. Museum. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Why won't you ever come? You know what? I didn't want to starve. <laughs> I like the idea of making motherfucking money. But you know what? Now that I sit here on your couch at 50 years old, you know, a friend of mine is doing this movie and, and you know, he asked me to like cast a couple characters. And so we were, it's theatrical, it's great script. And so when I was doing the reading with the talent that would come in or when I would do a couple table reads to work on the script, like he'd work on the script, he was like, Mark, I want you to audition for this nurse. Like, and I was like, oh no. And I ended up getting it and I ended up shooting for four days and it was so much fun. Like I was like all these years I've managed other people to success and made their dreams come true and made them millions of dollars. And yes, I've had a T I've had many TV shows because every time I'm doing a casting, they'll be like, you just host it. You just do it. You just do it. And I see that in my 11 year old. He has that gift. I think what's missing with millennials is they all think they're stars and they all want to be famous and they don't realize, you know, what comes with it. Well, not even what comes with it. There, you have to have talent. And, and one out of 5,000 people has a glimmer of that shine that can be a star, but it has to be polished and, you know, it got it has to get bright. Yeah. But you have to have talent, you know, and I see it in my 11-year-old, like, he, his imagination and he'll be playing with his, like, you know, Spider-Man and this, and he gets in these intense scenes and, like, you know, it, and, and I, maybe healthy. not in front of the camera, but, like, you can see he's creative, you know, and he's going to have a wicked imagination. Lucas too, but Lucas is way more going to be a businessman. Lucas will have, you know, he was a great success. Flip, he's yeah. Flip phones there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different time. Different time. Don't you think it's changed motherhood? Haven't you seen mothers walking and texting and not, you, you want to tell them, don't, you're going to miss it. Well, I want to know. I want to say, put your fucking phone down because you're driving 10 miles per hour and you're a fucking asshole. And then in LA, if you honk at someone, they look at you like, what the you're fuck? Crazy. Like, I'm crazy. It's like, you Get fucking the phone. It makes me absolutely crazy. They were upset crazy. saying they, the light just changed. They say, yeah, but I got to get them off the phone. Right. I know. And people say things to me like, I sent you a text. What, don't you look at your emails when you, you know, you're, you're on the road all day. Right. Your email. Does that make any sense? No. I look at my phone when I'm running around crazy with my kids, maybe in the morning and before I go to bed, literally. 
You know what I mean? Uh, because I, first of all, I'm so happy I wasn't born in the generation where these kids are just addicted to their phones. And, and they it's, don't know it's like they don't know what it's like. They don't know how to say hello. I said hello to a young girl at the bank. She looked, looked at me. Out. Yeah, like I was going to rob her. I was like, oh, sorry, kindness. I know it's it's lost on your generation. Just being civil, just being caught. Like, you know, they, they, they don't understand. And even these people that have like Insta success because of Instagram or social media. Right. They don't understand that, like, like ooh, the comics. you won't last long. You know what I mean? No. no. You know. Because if you have to do an hour in Vegas, let's see. When you have to do the business of show, yeah, it's a whole, do an whole, hour. Right. I want right. to see how right. many women do you know right. that could do an hour and right. really hold somebody. Totally. I, I, I'm down with you. I, I was reading an article about that Charlie DeMillo on TikTok who has the most followers. It's like 17-year-old girl. And my 11-year-old follows her. And she just got like a $20 million deal. And, you know, you're like, okay, but she can't act. She can't sing. She can't dance. I mean, She's a Kardashian. You know, right? And it's like you just go like, but here's the thing. I hope the parents, I hope the parents put it away. I hope they buy her a house in her name, put a big chunk away because it's not going to be there forever. It's going to be a short-lived window. You okay. know what I mean? Oh, you and you can't tell them anything. Oh no, no, no. They, they know can. everything. And if you catch them on the phone, you know what they're doing now? I'm reading. Right. I'm reading. I'm reading. Right. I've never seen you. No. I'm like, how are you going to meet somebody? Listen, there what? was wallflowers back then. Now what do they call phone flowers? Well, they, go to, they go to phone. They, they go just, in the corner in the phone. Right. Because they're I know. I got somewhere I to be. I know. I mean, it does come in handy. something in Yeah, it does come in handy, the phone, every once in a while. Like, I just took Finn up to Montecito to stay at the new Rick Caruso Hotel, the, the Rosewood Miramar. For a Wednesday night or a Thursday night, the room was 1600 bucks for one night. So you're thinking, okay, it's going to be the utmost decadence of luxury and, you know, horrible service, horrible food. When we actually got by the beach and they gave us towels, there was snot on the towel. And no. I, I took a picture of it. And when I checked out, I said to the manager, I said, listen, you know, the fact that you're charging quadruple of what you charged eight months ago during a pandemic with the shittiest service I've ever had, like you should be embarrassed at these prices. I go, but more importantly, if I put this picture out on Instagram about Rosewood, Miramar during a pandemic, COVID has snot on their towels, I think you'll be down to 200 bucks a night. And, and she said, don't post it. We'll give you half off if you wrote See, this is what I mean. She's ah! your head. And I met it. you through that girl, Terry Berlin. That's yes, how I met yes. you. She said to me, are you really from Patterson? And I said, yes. And she said, you know who's upstairs? I said, who? She said, you know Luke Costello? I said, he can't be upstairs. <laughs> I said, Luke Costello, he used to drink on River Street with my grandfather. He goes, she says to me, well, I'm going to introduce you to his granddaughter. And that's how I met Martin. And let me tell you, we have stayed in touch over the years. And we've been through a lot. And we thought we were at the peak of insanity when a mutual business person we did business with when the kid was up in the balloon remember the balloon boy incident this was the woman that also came to help the mother keep her kids how do you explain the balloon boy how do you explain uh, no it was a couple that had uh, uh, an editing bay below my management company i now actually have my studio in their old space no um uh, yeah that's where my studio is, is and hottie still there real though oh no but it's all gorgeous now <laughs> and they redid the whole thing they spent 50 grand on redoing it after they left but um, they had rats, disgusting. But the point is, um, you know, I sent her business. But then her husband and her, like, once again, this is back in what? What year would 90s. you say that? 90s. The obsession of fame back then. And he wanted, he would see all these people's reels that he would be editing of my clients that were successful and on TV or making it and making money. And you could just see Richard just, like, sitting in this edit bay with his wife, Mayumi, who is literally, like, you know, basically like a sweatshop of editing. He's making her yes, edit 80 hours a day. And then she gets knocked up twice. Then they lose their three apartment times. or three times. They lose their apartment. They're living there with rats and this. And by the way, there's only a bathroom outside of the office. Frightening. The kid and, has no shower. Right. And then they go, they move to what, New Mexico, wherever it happened? Where? They go to chase tornadoes. Yes. Oh, they become tornado chasers. Yeah. That's right. And wife swap. And, and wife, wife swap. swap. Yep. 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 Wife swap. Okay. Right. Because once again dying to be famous, dying to be relevant, dying to be whatever. Then why have kids? Then why do it? Now they're a rock and roll band. Let me ask ah, you. Now they're it's a rock so and funny. roll band. You're asking me about as a black woman how hard it is for me. You know what you never ask me though? Why is it so different for, the, for a biracial woman? They never look at you the same when they say that they want black and they say black and they say not ambiguous. 
Like there's a I whole other one. I never but see, Marky's that. different. Maybe Marky's you know different. What? Because you know what? I just the, I, I I know people say I don't see color. It's not that. It's yeah, like, it has yes, to see. That. I see color absolutely, and I'm not gonna be that idiot. But what I do want to say is. I just, I'm a straight shooter. I don't, you're no less to me or white, black, whatever. I don't, my brain, it's just like when people will go like, can you believe that lady had a nose job or eyes? I was like, oh, she did. I just don't, I I don't, I'm like, what I'm asking you. I don't see all that bullshit. Okay. You don't see it. So why did, why do you, would you say America needs to see it that way? Like, remember Jeff Gitlin had sent me on that audition for Born Free and I got there and they were all African Africans. And I called him and I said, Jeff, I said, did you know they're all Africans here? And he goes, Sunda, I don't know what you see in the mirror when you get up in the morning. I said, Jeff. Right. I go, right. Did he get right. Up? How, right. 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 Like right. You're never yeah. going to get cast as an African woman. Right. Never going to happen. It's- I one time said to a girl I was teaching, and I go, um, I somehow said African American, and she was like, African American? I'm not from Africa. I'm a black girl. I was like, okay. That's like, me. I right. Right. You know. And so then I yeah. got nervous. Do I say black African American? Like, I don't want to be not PC. Like. But I'm that's, tired of that. I'm too. tired and of Don't it. tell me what I am. But right. I've lived it. I right. was a Negro first. Right. Okay. I remember. I can right. go back a little right. bit. But do you okay, but do you think they're they're now that more doors have opened and people are less idiots and like, you know. Absolutely not. I think that they've been guilted into it. You know, it's funny when people would call for Sunda, they'd be like, Oh, do you have a black girl that's da da? I put Sunda in. I remember one time they were like, I need a criminal justice, like a Caucasian criminal justice girl. I put Sunday in because I was like, okay, because you can be Caucasian, you know what I mean? Meaning, but I got that job. Right, right. My brain doesn't go, like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, whatever, like. Talent is talent. Talent is talent. And, you know, like, I think it's so crazy that we do have racism in 2020. I think it's crazy. And we have black on black racism. And we have black on black. black. Yes, I do. I don't even talk about it. Yeah, right. Why don't you think they talk about it? Because it's one of those things that I shouldn't talk about. Just like when I started talking about hair weaves back in the day and I got letters. Don't do that. Why do you have to expose our sisters and all that stuff? And then, wow, lo and behold, Chris Rock does the hair thing. Oh, please don't get me started with the nail thing. How long was I doing the nail routine right, right, right. before I was accused of taking it? What, right. 10 years ago somebody right. took it? Oh, right. Mark, yeah. Is it still like that with stealing someone's joke? Because, like, back in the day, like, if you ever took someone's set or joke, that's like, that's comedy. That's comedy death. That's like, you'll be blackballed. You will not, like, but now with Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and social media, do you see more people stealing bits? Almost certainly. I was thinking about myself, you know, being an adult, married, getting adult toys, you know, like a walker, cane, stuff like that. Hybrid? <laughs> so adult toys. Get it? Adult <laughs> toys? Yeah. Right. So you look at people, they take these jokes and they make it part of their act. Lisa Lampanelli, she was great. She did all the friars. Right, right, all the right, friars. Right, right. We heard those jokes a thousand right, times. Right, right, right. And it's amazing how people make it. And a little known fact is Lisa Lampanelli, she made it by running her comedy class. Okay? So Lisa would have you bring 15 people to go on, and she would do 45 at the end. Everybody's right, five right, minutes, right, 45. Right, right. And then to a full house. To a full house. And then her all audience. of a sudden, we're performing with Big Pussy from The Sopranos, and she's coming out there, and we didn't even know she had a plant in the audience. Hey, you bald-headed bastard. Look at this guy. And you would think, oh, my God, it's so funny. Right. And what I didn't know is that Don Rickles did not like her saying that she was the female Don Rickles. Right, right, right. right. She said, don't tempt it. Right. You know, like Audrey says, don't say you're great. Let other people tell you you're great. Right. You right. know. But, yeah, no, I just, yeah, I mean, but Marky is great. Let me tell you Marky is great at what she does. I want to tell you this much. I didn't think I needed a hosting class because I'm funny enough, whatever. Say what she taught me. What happens when you get pulled with somebody who's unfunny? Well, it's not even that. You can be funny, but that doesn't make you a good host. You know, and especially in this landscape, you have to know the power of the audience. And you have to know the audience has a shit ton of choices. And if they choose your show, you better fucking choose that. And not be like, hey, what's up, guys? and all generic and whatever like if it's a show on music it's like hey my music junkies like you know thank you for being here because there's so many places you could be and i'm glad you chose me but let's get into it i don't want to waste your time like let's just get right to it right and you have to really know the power of the audience you have to know how to coexist with the co-host being able to piggyback and keep it fluid for the audience if you're reading prompter you have to know your transition words like and or or but those are transition words that's where the story takes a transitions term. and a turn so you know people that have no experience i'll be like it coming up and i'm like eh, uh, like, that <laughs> one, like right you, you once again you're navigating the audience through the creative you know so especially in 2020 
you know, I noticed with my, look, I, I am the number one media coach, hands down. Now in this Instagram world, Ooh, every wow. motherfucker is a coach. Right. I'm a mom coach. I'm a, a tip coach. Have I'm you a, seen this? I see it all the time and it makes me laugh. I was watching Big Brother the other night and they were like, uh, this contestant, she's an acting coach. And I like went to Google her. I was like, she's never acted. I don't understand. How is she an acting coach? She's never acted, never studied. She was on Big Brother. And somehow people think, hey, coach me in acting. There's nothing she can teach you. But like they see you on TV, then they think, you know, and now TV is gone. Right, and now TV is gone. So what are you doing about that? So what now? now should I work for I'm the talk lucky show world? Because or? I've been doing this for almost my company I've had for 24 years, same office, same building. So I have, you know, clients that I make 15% of their of their paycheck that have been on TV for 15, 20 years. So I'm lucky that I have that commission still coming in. And because I am the number one media coach, NBC, ABC, all the big networks, all the huge production companies, I coach people like Carly Cos for Project Runway, Alex Rodriguez for CNBC. Like, I coach the big people. I have more people on TV than I've coached. Cam, right, you know, exactly. Cami Crawford, who's co-hosting on uh, MTV. So I just saw her this morning. I was like, oh, that, that's a good gig. Uh, point is, if Jeannie Mai on The Real, you know, Jason Kennedy, E! News. So, uh, create, tell me why I'm not on eight Carrie of those Cherfian, shows. Tell me, tell me where I would the fit Titans. in. The Titans. Tell me where I would fit in being. I never really, like, to you, to me, like, you weren't the best host. You were a great comic. You were funny. You were a good actress. You know, like, hosting was like. You always pushed you to be acting. Yeah, I pushed you more into acting because, you know, to be a good host, you got to be a great listener. You can't. Comics have a hard time making the transition to hosting unless they get a little media training. Because the mistake they make is they're waiting for the funny. They're waiting always. for the laughter. And in hosting, you can't. You have to. You're 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 keeping it moving. Now, if you do happen to say something funny on the way, great. But you but we'll make comics, it a goal, right? Right. And they always. Do you know who I used to bring in. in all the time when I was casting? Is Bunting. no Sebastian Lagalia. Oh, yeah. la, la. Say his last name. Maniscola. Maniscola. I love him. I He's do my too. favorite male comic ever. 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 I love next to her ex husband. Um, next to my ex. Oh, I'm having dinner with. He's in town. I'm oh my dinner. God. Yes. I'll tell you. Yes. Isn't that great? That's my ex. And my great love friend. to see him. Yes. He's such a great guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great guy. Wait, how long have you and Mark been married? Oh my God. Well, I lie because I want the kids to know we're living together first. <laughs> Don't do it when you eat the milk like, for free. Do you think they're going to give a shit no. 17 and 18 for the love at of this God? Point, right. No, not at this point. Yeah, right. we've been together over 20 years. Do you guys ever fight? <laughs> <laughs> Never where I left. Never where I left. What, what's the number one thing you fight about? Uh, no bullshit honesty. I'm a mess. So he, you, you guys fight about you being a mess. Yeah. He just thinks you're all over the place. No, 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 not that. It's just that physically, I don't have help every. You know, when you had a nanny, you remember how it oh, used so to be? So get it straight. When you don't have your nanny and your housekeeper, that's right. Staff. They want me to clean the house. Right. I'm working. Yeah, Come I on, Marky. That. That's I don't, bullshit. I don't that Marky, um, that's bullshit. Housekeeper, nanny, you know. Yeah, because right. you're working. Right. And you want me to right. be at, right. listen, my right. kids, you want me to be PTA. Right. All right. right. No, trust me, I know. Hey, the key to being a great mom. Is having a job and having a nanny and someone to cook and go to the market and clean. When I come home from work, my house is spotless, my kids are bathed and fed, and then I can have the best time with them. Hey, let's do homework, let's watch a movie, let's take a walk, let's go bike ride. Like, you know, it was always great because I never ever felt like, oh, I've been with a kid all day. And, you know, and that's why I think my oldest son is so successful because he said to me recently, which really made me get teary eyed, he goes, Mom, I watched you work your whole entire life while being a great provider, a great mom, giving us a great life. You know what I mean? And right. I want that. I want to give my wife someday a great life and, and be the same kind of parent you're you gonna were. You're going to be a mother-in-law. Right. And then right. you're going right. to sue. Right. Poo, poo, poo. Then, then you're going to sue. Then I'm going to sue. Then yeah. you're going to sue your daughter-in-law. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait, who sued you? Which one? My mother-in-law. Why did your mother-in-law sue you? She said I was using her in the act. But she knew. Right? Wait, so Mark's thing. mother sued you. <laughs> <laughs> so your husband's mother sued you because you were mentioning her in the act. That's what they claimed. It was a well, whole who's they? Her the and the in-laws. The in-laws. All of the in-laws claimed the that? One, the one that says she sounds like a cat in heat. I got in trouble for that joke. Couldn't Mark just say, Mom, come on. Couldn't he? She had just called me? Right. Why couldn't you call you? Why couldn't she? That, because it had to be dramatic. Mm. It had to be dramatic. We're going to show you. We're suing you. Never thinking, hey, idiot, I am a celebrity. Believe it or not. Right, just right, like, right. So you don't know me in Brooklyn right. doesn't mean right. that I'm nobody. Right. And, and if were, my son ever said to me, hey, mom, 
you know, yeah, my wife or girlfriend's using you into her act. She saw it though. She went on stage at the lap. I would be liar. like, great, fabulous. But what, did, but what they did that was wrong was cut the kids out of the will. That was wrong. And that was all just, because you mentioned her. All because act. Mark wrote, I'm a black woman. Let's tell the truth. Okay. You heard the right, whole story. Right, you were right, there. Right, right. You date this funny, nebbishy, you know. You knew me before I was like, married. I know. Wait, but you converted for him. Get the fuck out of here. I would never convert for a man. You didn't convert to Judaism? For him? Yeah. No. Oh, I thought you wanted to think you did. <laughs> he wanted to make that face. No. I, that's so why that's you're a much better actress than host. Go on. Because I am not, I'm a great host, Mark. But you're better actress. You know why? You're right about that. Comedians can't shut the fuck up. <laughs> Or they're worrying about be they're worried right, themselves. Be present more, like in the sense where, like, I, mindful, mindful, of like the person right. here this day, right? right. Like, you let me. I'll, I'll show story. you a Jedi mind twist on you. I want, like, what's one thing in the last four months that really brought you to your knees and made you cry and sat? Like, what was one thing? Be the honest. death of my brother. Your death, death of your brother. My baby brother. Yeah. How did he die? He had a heart attack. How old? Thirty nine. So why do you think it brought you on your knees? Like, why do you think it impacted you? Obviously, being your sibling or not, but why? Well, do you... it, was, it was the year that was coming up. That it was the whole year was bad, but towards the end it got worse and dark, because it's very difficult to bring someone from the hospital to the grave, and it's right. just you know you're faced with a reality that also he was involved with a crazy woman who then has this whole scene in front of people from the from the you know from. The comic strip, the stand-up, all the comedy clubs. My friends but see, this is why. Friggin drama. I try to get her to go deep, and somehow she goes from that deep. I'm telling you. I know, but then you go with the, the girl and the comedy, and then it takes us, it jolts us as the audience to the right. We're like, wait, no, 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 wait. No. Like, That's only if you don't Look at I got the audience but, shaking their head up and down. This is the way I do it, though, because the ADHD kicks in by bringing it right around. Only because. Are you taking, are you snorting? After this Are shit? you snorting Adderall? Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to put you to sleep. They were all here when this happened. And yeah. remember, I'm going through this bad thing with my brother. Yeah. And we just do an interview with Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. And Blair, right? And Blair who? Underwood. And okay. this idiot ex comes up and says, Sunday's a liar. She never cared about her brother. She's guilty. Oh, yeah. So don't, and that's not Who was that? She came in here? No, the ex I was telling you about. When I was trying to, you said I got what that, impacted it, me. That oh, brought it, made it worse. So it made you question no it made me hate her for right. no reason i don't even know this right. woman right. to hate right but it just brought such bad taste and, and pain me and finn watched the wolf of wall street right someone said you let an 11 year old watch it i was like yeah he's, he's in the i go i i always let my kids watch movies because that's why my, my kids are so creative and smart like he knows it's not real when he's snorting cocaine off her asshole that's not real cocaine What's going on? Comedy munching ass. What are they talking about? <laughs> munching ass. It's disgusting. <laughs> you never munch ass. You couldn't pay me to munch ass. You couldn't. What well, depends on the money. Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> or the ass. Right. Um. Puma and Weinstein. Uh, well, no, finally. But finally. Finally. I mean, finally. I, I, you see these big, powerful men. You know, um, fall. And and I hope that more good comes from. We're seeing how, you know, the sexism and the shit that we've had to put up with as women. Sexism, right. especially with Marky being the only female. Yeah, she the shit that I put up with. And also women fucking me over. So it's like we talk about men fucking women over all the time. Let's talk about the women who fuck over other women. Don't There's a special it. place in hell for you, motherfucker. There's a very special place in hell. Right. Now, Marky and I are two women who try to help other women. And that's exactly. the first thing I've ever said. Right, absolutely. We will try to help other women. And not to get something out of it, either. No, I was at the bank before I came here, and this teller was like, Oh, you're. you're a, she goes. You're. I, she goes. Oh, you own a management company. I was like, yeah. And, and I go, you're an actress. And she was like, oh my god, how did you know? I was like, been doing this a long ass time. <laughs> and we're in LA, and everybody's a fucking actress or has a screenplay. So um, we chatted for a bit, and then at the end, I said, look, if you want me to look at your reel, here's my card. Email me, and I'm happy to look at your reel, give you some constructive criticism. And she was like, why would you do that? And I was like, because everybody needs a break. I'm not saying I manage you. I'm right. saying. I'll help you in the right direction with your material so that you can submit that to possibly get management. But you have to do that. Kindness. We need to bring mankind back to kind. We need to stop being on our phones. We need to stop comparing. We need to get this idiot out of the White House. I don't know if Joe Biden is the answer, but thank God we have a female on the ticket. At least. At least. Hey. hey we got a breeder. No. Exactly. <laughs> um, and we've got to make some major changes. The homeless in LA is disgusting as far as like the fact that we let our vets serve our country and then and they're live living like on the that? street. That's uh, that's disgusting. disgusting. Right. 
disgusting. We, we need to start to really get back to the fundamentals of what America was really all about. And in entertainment, we don't want Marky to ever think, wow, this is what comedians do when they come on and talk. And she's 100% right. And I have fought very hard not to be that host. I see it every single Well, finish. You were saying finish no. for your audience. Oh, you, you've said it. I've told them. I've told them on certain guests are going to come on and they're going to do right. their bit. Right. It's not going to be an interview. I'm trying to make it just like casual, like me and Mark, you're right. just shooting the, the breeze. Which we are. Right. But right. you don't see me come up with, you know, the smooth of blood. blah, 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 blah. Right. I mean, it's like, come on, man. Right. We right. hear all that. We want to hear something That's... about you. Like Vanessa's story. Did you hear his story about why he doesn't? No, beat... I didn't. I just, it, it was, was beautiful. Idea. It was yeah. beautiful. And he right. was saying why he doesn't beat his daughter because he doesn't want to have to tap his daughter and discipline her at that time to let her know, I did this because... I had to show you so that you remember, but it doesn't mean that I don't love you. I love you. I had to do this. And I was like, yeah, I feel it. He says, no, it takes a turn. I can't do that. Because one day she may be with a man. The man hits her. I've and says, never hit my kids. Listen, he says, and says, hits her and says, it's okay. Because I love you. Right. And you have boys, too. Right. Right. Boys love their mothers. Right. Don't even mark it. And they'll be great. Boyfriends and husbands, trust me on that. You know yes, what I mean? they will. How to treat a woman. And, you know, we right. don't have girls, so that's why they're so fucking great. Right, they are. I, Mine are great, too. Though. I got yeah. great kids. I'm a boy <laughs> mom, for sure. You know what I mean? You and, are. You, yeah, and you're totally a girl mom. Like, you know, but I think it's the most important job, really. You know, we have to make sure they grow up to be responsible humans, but most importantly, have empathy and compassion and not be sociopaths and liars and, you know. Just tell me the truth and we're good. Exactly. I always say to my kids, if you don't tell me the truth, I can't get ahead of it. You know what I mean? Like, I can't help you. And I can't help you. Right. And they know, they call me Vanessa Williams because huh. I finesse everything. You know what I mean? And so my kids know, like, when they're in trouble, it's like, no, don't call their dads. They're like, no, call mom. mom. Yeah, mom she'll will do it. She'll fix mom it. will finesse it. She'll fix it. She'll make shit happen. Make, you know what I mean? We, I right. make, we make it happen. We make it happen. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. We'll wash our hands right. later. We ah, 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 ah. How yes, many times have I called you a craziness, man, about schools and shit? Well, it's not I, a lot. Um, but, you know, I, and I think it's especially hard. It's not our 35 minutes. I think it's especially hard when you do have girls compared to boys. Because I, I were like, if I was a girl mom, I would be paranoid. Like, look at that guy. Who's following me on Instagram? Like, just because you know. I'm on it. You're good. And I had the sheriff when they were 12. Good. I watched everything online. And my daughter came on this podcast and told all the rotten things that I did huh. to her. Right? And said how grateful she was. She didn't think those pictures were inappropriate until I said so. Whether I took them or not, you asked me to take this picture. I know you'll put it on Instagram. Right. I took the picture. Right, right. So I'm not going to keep on talking about this. I just want to say we have to let this work. Look, it's not going to go back to normal, normal. Marky, the kids are missing it. Yeah. They're going to miss Studio 50. They're going to miss parties. They're going to yeah. miss it. But, dude, just stop hating and not right. know why you're hating. Right. Because we're. it's only going to get worse before it gets better. We're going to go into the flu season. It's going to be more lockdowns, more shutdowns, more people are going to get sick. Hospitals are going to be at capacity. Okay, so what's your, what's your, what's your, give me something about COVID. What is your one thing that you do to protect yourself with COVID when you go out? I do something weird. I want to know what you do. Okay, whenever I go out, I literally always wear my mask and I have my hand sanitizer in my car. I have like masks and everything. I have hand sanitizer. I have plastic gloves. I'm just crazy when I go out. But when I'm home, I'm lax and I'm cool and, you know. And I'm, when I teach, like, I'll say to the people, you can keep your mask on. I'm going to keep mine off, you know. Um, and I just said, I haven't been around anybody sick that I know, but I'm not sick. And I don't know anybody that has COVID. Go at your own risk. But, you know. So you have no trips? No tricks? No tricks. I, I got a trip. I got a trip. I got COVID trip. What is it? I line my nostrils with Neil's corn. I am that crazy. But what is that? What, what does it do? I would think it would make everything stick in there. You should see. I'm That's scared. all I gotta say, people. I, I don't know if I want to see that. I'm scared to see. You'll be but... scared to see. What Welcome to the talk okay. show on the go. <laughs> I just, I just, all right, so real quick, mom trick. A, okay. a mom trick. What, what's the quickest dinner that you can put together? <laughs> oh, it's really easy. I want to hear. I want to hear the rest. Postmates. <laughs> ah! from being delivered and I make a quick salad and that's my go-to easy breezy. It takes 30 minutes. Dude, that out. is easy yeah. breezy, man. Yeah. But my kids are food snobs. So they don't, it doesn't go down easy. Like, you know, that's like, what's that about? Uh, my kids are like, my 22 year old is a foodie and a snob 
And Finn, the other night, he's like, can I have takeout? I was like, sure, what do you want to go? South Beverly Grill. I'm like, well, McDonald's is takeout. South Beverly Grill is 30 bucks for a sandwich. Right. That's right. They have right. no concept. They have no concept. Yeah. I did get him a $30 sandwich, well, absolutely. by the way. Right. You yeah. know why? Because they're for right. kids. Because they're for kids. And you know right. something in this business? Well, listen, show business is one thing, but mom business is another. And if something's going to hurt, it's not going to be my kids. No, absolutely not. No. no, absolutely not. But I'm going to tell you, you can rely on Marky for so many things. And so many things, not only just being like the greatest hosting media magnet if you person want to learn in the how world. To take your, if you want to do stuff on camera, because I don't care if you're a doctor or a lawyer, I don't care what your business is in 2020, you have to be, you have to know how to navigate being in front of the camera because whether it's on your website or your Instagram or this or that, and that's really what I'm, I'm great at branding you and teaching you everything of how to build it. And, you know, from there, you'll, you'll, you'll have beautiful stuff, a beautiful brand, and you'll know how to interview. You'll know how to read copy. If you're reading copy, you'll know the pace because the audience is fickle and you have about four seconds to engage them. Like, you know, you'll know all of those things. You'll know the value of who your audience is. And that's why I think I have so many people on TV working because I always sort of forecast what's next. And I'll tell you what's next is it's. No more bullshit. It's really knowing your craft, whatever, whether it's acting, singing, dancing. It's really having the credibility. But you can't do it with comedy all the time. I'm sorry. I know we're going over, but I don't feel the Zoom. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Oh, that fuck way. the Zoom. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, teaching over Zoom, it's like, it's so ass and I'm so stupid. I refuse. And what I do is I just tell them, like, look, I'm teaching class on this day. I'm going to, you're going to, I'm COVID compliant. You know, I do everything I can, but you got to also live your life because if someone called you and said, Hey, we want you to star on your own talk show and we're going to pay you $5 million. Uh, but you know, the, the camera people might not wear masks. What would you say? Okay. Right. Listen, right. this is my girl. Cause right. you know, we love, we do love some money though. Right. Right. We do right. love money right. and we're going to work together because if nothing else, I should be on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> I know Kate Lee who runs spectrum. Do you? Yes. yes. I need a job. Yeah. But what would you be doing on Spectrum? Do they hire old people? I love it. <laughs> Listen, not only is this talk show on the go, but of course you can see us on YouTube, as you know, and then I've got my Patreon page that we're keeping uh, LASE open. And I'd really like to have you here for another show. It's called Teen Time. Okay. I would and love this is for young talent. Love it. That would, I want them to listen to you as opposed to me because I'm the funny one. But when and you, I'm the smart one? No. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're smart, funny, but you are indeed um, a teacher in terms of letting these kids get off the phone for the hosting. I, I Look, I see auditions. They're on their phones before the audition. Oh, yeah, yeah. Marky, yeah. they're not even looking at copy. Mm -mm. You know, um, and the most important thing is I don't even want you staring at the copy. I want you going, what is this for? It's for Nickelodeon. Okay, who's the audience? Guess what? The Nickelodeon audience is like nine to 14. Figure you it out. Think how you're going to engage them with this black and white stuff typed on this piece of paper, like while being you. And that's the most important thing because anybody can read, you know what I mean? No one needs you to memorize it. Like there's probably going to be a prompter, you know, or it's probably just the creator for the audition. Like, so really once again, it's knowing your audience. Why do you think people get so much money if you have a big audience on social media? Do you have followers? That's your audience because that's what it's all about. It's all about the audience. No audience, no show. No influencer, no record deal, no comedy. So right? you better get some followers. That's what she's Not saying. even that. You better learn how to engage a motherfucking audience. Right. And get off the phone. And get off the phone. And on your, phone. On your I, phone. I'll teach you how to engage on your phone. You want to be a talk host? Where do you find you? Uh, you can reach me at, uh, you can go to my website. Uh, you can call toll free 1-888-878-2634. You can email me marky at cmeg.com or info at cmeg. Don't you have a card that will come up of Chiron? Isn't this a, a legitimate place though? What do you think it is? is it Lencino? Marky at cmeg.com. I want to be a host. I go to it. I want to be a host. Or go to becomeahost.com. Becomeahost.com. Yeah, becomeahost.com. I love your work. I love you, Marky. I love you. This talk show's on the go. We're out. Peace. Oh, 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 oh.